introduce the West Coast premiere of Mr. Soul. Um, directed by Melissa Hayslip and Samuel Connor. Thank you so much. So glad everyone is here tonight. This is so special. So I'm not going to take up too much time. I just want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank Film Independent and the LA Film Festival for having us. We're so excited to be here in Los Angeles. We started the project here 10 years ago. And so we have many people who've been a part of it, family, friends, team, crew, and everybody's here tonight. So I want you to enjoy the show. We're going to do a fabulous Q&A afterwards. And thank you so much. which is so important to the film. Yes, the music is really a character in the film for us. Mm -hmm. It's 
and why it was so important to bring on this wonderful artist, Rhonda Glasser. We are still blessed to have her. Thank you, Melissa. Yes, yes, love. Um, it was quite a process. As you can see, we had five years of soul to, to sort of try to capitulate, which was very difficult, trying to choose the most salient moments of, of the, so many, well, 130 episodes. Wow. But also what was really uh, important was locking in and distilling the story that we were telling and matching that with the performances and the appearances and making each uh, story or each piece of archive had to earn its way into the film. Right. And so then you had also the archive of what was happening in the zeitgeist mm -hmm. that would help to define uh, the culture and what happened before and after. So there were many different layers of archival that we had to deal wow. with. Yeah, it was very exciting. Right. And then, um, could you, and then uh, Robert, could you um, elaborate on your relationship and just how you, you were able to, to create such like a musical masterpiece? Well, thank you, first of all, to Melissa, who did a fantastic job, not only in the picture, but musically as well. She had sort of set up a sort of a nice palette for us to sort of work on before we were involved. But I do have to say thank you to the publishing community, by the way, the music publishing community, who was really helpful in trying to get this stuff, the rights to this stuff, which is not easy, by the way. And they were very, we appreciate the work that they did. And, but I was brought on, and um, I had just finished a picture with Robert. We did uh, together, we did the Miles Davis movie, Miles Ahead, mm. uh, which we both won a Grammy for. <laughs> Uh, so when I first got together, you know, it, it was apparent that we, we had to bring in a composer and somebody that had a sensitivity, you know, not only to the culture and, uh, and, and, and the world and the music, but could come in and do it fast and economical, by the way, because these things have to get done that way. So um, the one of the first calls that I made was to, to Rob, who I just worked on, and, and told him about this beautiful this beautiful man, I'm trying to tell the story about it, right? Uh, brought Rob in, the first time he saw it was, you know, he was in from day one, you know, and he was fantastic because there's a lot of underscore to the movie that was, had to sort of tell a story by what Melissa was saying, by the year and, and by the time frame and everything else. And Rob was able to pick on, pick up on that and, and have a, such a wide palette to work from and it was just fantastic to do, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, for me, I mean, this, I, you know, this, everything in here reminds me of my house because my mom was, was a singer and she sung soul, she sung jazz, she sung R&B, she, you know, she sung such a wide palette of music, so, you know, I grew up, you know, I grew up with Wilson Pickett and Donny Hathaway and Marvin Gaye and Patti LaBelle and, you know, everybody out here, John Coltrane, and, like elderly, you know, every, so this, it was easy. It was, okay. it was just, you know, okay. it's in my blood, yeah. Yeah. you know. So it was really, it was fun to do, you know, and to be able to tell this story, you know what I mean, and be a part of this, it was, it was actually, it was amazing. But yeah, this was, when I, as soon as I saw it, I wrote, I started writing, in the middle of watching it, remember I stepped out. Yeah. It was, we were doing like a spotting session the first time he had seen uh, any of the footage and he got up suddenly and grabbed his cell phone and went out and I thought, oh gosh, he's probably you know, really famous, he's gotta take all these calls and I, I shouldn't pause it, I wasn't really sure what to do and then I went out to make sure he was okay and I realized he was singing. He was singing into his phone. He was composing on the spot. Well, that was for another movie though. <laughs> No, definitely, yeah. So I started writing immediately. I was in from the very beginning, you know what I mean? So it was, yeah. And he brought fabulous musicians, by the way. To, I don't know if any of them are here, but the musicians that performed on the score were just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, including Layla Hathaway, who's the voice of that last time. We started the film with Donnie Hathaway and we ended it with Layla Hathaway. I know you figured that out, right? Um, Felipe and Kathleen, you guys were featured. You know, on the actual soul, sh soul show, so I just wanted to ask you a couple questions. Um, Felipe, you really spoke with passion about when um, Ellis didn't want to fight for the show. I mean, did you come to understand his 
point of view and what happened after the show? I come from a revolutionary tradition. Kathleen and I do. She'll speak for herself in just a minute. I come from a tradition that says the devil is doubt, despair, and depression. That's what the devil is. Ellis's answer to that was soul. He was not going to allow the images of negativity that we had been seeing on television and in print and in the movies to define who we were as a people. And so for me, this was the army. This was the thing to do. I had come out of the last poets, had gone through the young lords, and went to see Ellis. And I said, if there is a way we can hold on to it, at the end of the film, it is said, by whom? What, I quest, what if we had been allowed to have a forum like that for 20 years? What might have happened to our youth? Look at what's happening in Chicago. Look at what's happening in Long Island with um, MS-13. Remember that Ellis took on this black Puerto Rican and said, do the show. That is, Ellis was so far ahead in terms of multiculturalism that he said, who said that we are different? We came on the same boat as Africans and we ended up in different places. We are all African, as Kwame Ture says. And he said, baby boy, do the show. And we had Tito Puente on, and we had also Willie Colon in his infancy and Hector Lavoe. It was a true, and we danced. The audience was dancing. So for me to lose that was to lose a piece of my liver, a piece of my heart. And I wanted to fight, but I realized, in Sonation, that Ellis was a fighter of a different ilk. I'm a project kid. I was raised on the streets. I come out of the gang system. I come out of a jail system. I know it doesn't look it. Ivaro! <laughs> but, but, but the best, the best warriors are those who are deceptive. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he did not come from that. And he said, based on his Based on his aristocracy, if you will, based on his class, I am not going to do that. He wanted to them to feel that they were losing it. And they didn't feel it. He said, baby boy, it's no way we're, we're gonna, I thought that if we're gonna go down, let's go down fighting, Ellis. Didn't wanna do it. I had organized everybody, everybody was down. I had to understand that not everybody fights the same way. It took me a long time to understand this. I'm pretty sure Kathleen, and let her speak, I had to go through the same thing. My position is that when it comes to the point where social justice cannot be debated anymore, and you are forced against the wall, a punch in the face is probably the most appropriate answer. Um, not everyone is like that, and I've had to deal with that. Ellis taught me restraint, taught me impulse control, and said there are other ways to fight. I miss him horribly, I miss this show horribly. Thank you. Kathleen, I wanted to ask, so of course, you know, one of the points of the 10 point program for the Black Panthers was calling for the black community to have control of our own destiny. And I'm wondering if you thought the Soul Show played into that goal, uh, you know, advanced that that goal in any way, and what the experience of being on the show was like. Well, it was a long time ago, right. and uh, yeah. it was fun. That's what I remember. Yeah. It was fun. And what what I don't really remember being on the show as much as being in the studio. And the reason I remember being in the studio because it was a crowd of other young Panthers mm -hmm. that came with me. 
And the one I remember the most is Mumia Abu Jamal, who was 16 years old. Now some of you might know the name, Mumia Abu Jamal, who's still in prison. He's framed on a murder charge in Pennsylvania. He's aging in prison. He's, he's yeah, but I mean, it's one of those, those uh, police situations. Uh, there was a shooting incident. Mumia was on the ground wounded. A policeman was on the ground wounded. The policeman died. Mumia survived. And Mumia's been uh, imprisoned ever since. And so that's, that's what I remember most about the show, is that when I went to be interviewed, and I believe, was it in New York? Because I lived in New Haven at the time, I think. And that all these Panthers, and in particular Mumia, who was 16, mm -hmm. who came up from Philadelphia, we were all sitting around. We were kind of a collective group. We would go places together in crowds, and I think I had a leather. <laughs> um, it, it's a it's a it's a much happier era when that show was being made. That's what I remember. When I say happier, it wasn't that we were happy as much as we were engaged in challenging what we made us unhappy, <coughs> and we were more upbeat and more uh, what's the right word? More anticipating something better mm -hmm. than we are now. Right. That's my sense. <coughs> I mean, and going back to Questlove's question, which I thought was a great question, I mean, what do you, what do you all think? How things would be different if the show had lasted longer? Or well, do you think there's something that's that's sort of occupying that similar space today? Uh, first, I'd like to thank you, Musa, for this journey from all of us, because. This film, for me specifically, uh, as I sat and watched it and experienced it actually, is a underscore of my life. Because many of the individuals that we saw, both that are here and gone, shaped and molded Oba Babatunde. I was a member of the National Black Theater and everybody knows that. Yes. We spent a lot of time together. On Sundays, we had symposiums and where everyone would come. All of these amazing great artists and Ellis gave those artists an opportunity to do what we did not have the opportunity to do was to be seen by the world population. And we're still now through this film having the opportunity to be represented in our greatness in our blackness, without it being defined in some sort of hyphenated concept, somebody else's idea, it was originally what we are and still are. So living this moment for me is probably one of the most unique experiences I've had in a very long time, because when do you get an opportunity to look and go page by page of the attributes of your life, told in a fascinatingly yes. powerful story, yes. motivating one to continue what we used to identify as the struggle, because as Felipe said, it, it's not ending. It hasn't ended. We owe it to ourselves who are still here to continue to exemplify through it be our art the power of a people. I am so honored to be a part of this project. Melissa called me almost nine years ago and we started talking about this because, uh, as I said, when I went to do the, revive, the ritual on there, which we got a chance to do, which was a production that NBT, Barbantia, Rahotaki, Taifu, as she became, right? Uh, it was a time, for those of you who might not have experienced it, where It wasn't canned. It wasn't, we didn't have cell phones. 
We didn't have the media in that way. We, our art was defined by the times in which we were living. The times in which we were growing because we were all very young. You know, revolutionaries are young people because older people are tired. <laughs> but we were young and what we were were fearless. We were fearless. And it wasn't like we had it all figured out, but we had passion, we had a sense of commitment, a sense of dedication, and through our arts. And I tried, and I will continue to try, and encourage anyone who is an artist to identify the power of the media and speak through your art. Because if you go back through history, as we exemplified in this movie, the artist or what gives you the accurate, the accurate story of the times. When you saw those performers performing, when we saw Patty, when we experienced, I mean, you know, it's not just sweetie pies. This is, this is, you know, and that show, I, 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 I said at the end there that it was a loss and a rage that still burns inside of me with where do you release that? Where do you, so you gotta put it, and what I've tried to do is put it into my art. See, I understand that the images that we present on the small, big screen or the stage go out around the world and suggest to someone who may not have ever had an opportunity to meet you who you might be should they. And so why would you disrespect and misrepresent that human being. We must continue, I believe, to represent ourselves as fully realized human beings, not hyphenated in some sort of idea. Felipe said it best earlier. You have to make sure that the global community, because we all came the same way, we are seated in our eyelash, in our, you know, when you hear something and it rearranges the molecules in your body, there's a reason for that. Because it's great grandma and great great grandma and grandpa and great 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 grandpa. And you must not be afraid. Thank you for your courage, sister. Thank you for your courage and your dedication to seeing this to and to the end. If I may, the next challenge is where is the next soul going to be produced? Yes. Some of us have suggested that Melissa produce a soul program for television. And one that, Baba, one that, oh, Baba, one that is inclusive of the entire diaspora. Imagine Glaspar, Bobby, playing with. Rualcaba, Gonzalo Rualcaba, who's an incredible Cuban pianist. Imagine Sandoval with Christian Scott. Imagine um, the flamenco with some of the hip hop dancers. Imagine, and it's all black. Imagine merengue, and you say, and now, ladies and gentlemen, with your elegant self, <laughs> my name is Melissa Hazlip, and this is Soul. Would you? <laughs> The things that are happening now uh, in Cuba, in the Dominican Republic, in Brazil, uh, in Honduras, and Peru, and Colombia are absolutely incredible. If Ellis were alive today, I'm positive he would have had the ambassador to Syria on. He would have had the ambassador of Israel. He would have had the people right now in Gaza. He was that kind of confrontationalist. Yeah. He would have had the people from uh, Cuba, well, you say Cuba, Puerto Rico would have been, Hurricane Maria would have not been a side issue. He would have had people talking about that and then he would have had all the music and that would have been the, the, the whole of it. 
We need another program. Let us remember also that Ellis believed in community. There were three things he believed in. And he didn't like to say this too much. But do you know that as much as he hated the church, and he did, <laughs> it was the church that gave him stability. It was his family that gave him stability. It was community that gave him stability. And I would hope that we as people of color understand that. Muhammad Ali said, if someone thinks the same way he did at 50, he did, it, he did, someone thinks the same way he does at 50 as he did when he was 30, he's lost 20 years. I believe that the next revolution will have God in it. We cannot just move on secular humanism. We've got to move in spirit as well. And so my feeling is that it's we're going to reach, we are reaching a nation here, folks. Our political system outside is insane. Look at what's happening with the Kavanaugh hearings. Do you know what Ellis would be doing with this? He'd be tap dancing. <laughs> he would love this. Um, and he would just offer you the information and say, what do you think about it? You know where we'd be going with this. I'm suggesting this, that before we reach what I perceive to be a real conflict in this country, uh, a second American revolution, Baba Tundi, uh, was scary to me. And before our youth, our youth, become anarchists and nihilists and begin to kill with impunity, not only outside the community, but inside the community, we had better develop another soul. Yes. Figuratively and literally. We better find a way to incorporate their passion, their auditory nerve, their optical nerve. We better get Bobby Glassbury into these public schools and pay him an enormous amount of money to do this thing. <laughs> Melissa, it's yeah, on you. Yeah. But I also wanted to acknowledge, we do have somebody very special who's not on stage, but I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Stan Lathan is here. Yes, yes. as well. Well, Melissa, um, I would love to keep going. Unfortunately, we have to wrap it up, but um, I can do one. We can do it now. We have time for yeah. maybe one or two yeah. questions. Yeah. Very concise. Yes. Some yearning, burning yeah. question out there? Just one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I am really interested in, him, in what we've heard of his voice. You had Blair voice some of his own words. And I'm curious to know where you collected that content. Is this gleaned from personal correspondence? Was he journaling in some conscious way about what his project was all about? Where did you find all that? Yeah, for the last 10 years, I've been strolling through and trying to find as much written material, uh, ephemera, collections from his journals, uh, interviews with various uh, magazines. He spoke more freely with, say, the black journalists than he did with others. So everything you hear in here is an exact quote verbatim from either an article that was written or an interview or a recording of him speaking. So we really wanted to give him his own voice because we found that, especially because he's deceased, that we wanted his character to come alive and we didn't want to be commenting on him, but to give him agency within his own story. And so it was really important to have his voice heard where we see him mostly only as the character in person, almost you know, impersonating a character of the host, but we don't get to see or hear the internal Ellis. So that's how we collected all of that. And then I gleaned from that and wrote the script and wrote about you know 100 different versions of the script until we distilled what would Ellis be thinking at this moment? What was his motivation for this? And so we built those little pods. And uh, then we had uh, Robert Glasper had his musicians come in. And we had an Ellis theme, which was the show me your soul. We sort of stripped down the elements and created these little um, sort of solo uh, where is your soul moments with each instrument? And then we had Blair Underwood come in and sort of embody the internal voice of Ellis. So Ellis's voice was very specific. We didn't want to mimic it. That was his sort of show voice, you know, his outward persona. And we wanted to know what would he sound like if he were thinking, if he were engaged that way. Academy Award for it, baby! Have the 130 episodes been archived? And if so, 
show, how can you access them? Because there was a time when you could see some of the episodes online. Yes. So how can I find that? There are, there's still an opportunity to see if anyone is a member of PBS or a member of PBS Passport. Unfortunately, that is a paywall, so you either have to be a member or it's a membership perk. You can go online and watch about uh, nine episodes there. There's another site, too, called Shout Factory TV. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so they have recently posted about 20 original episodes. But what we're hoping is with the uh, renewed, invigorated interest in the show that hopefully the film <coughs> will Yes, we'd love to see the film, the show come back, maybe as a, uh, perhaps um, a, a, like a box set, or a re-release, or just a platform where you could actually see the show, because it should be for the people. It was for the people initially, the live people, so it wasn't for that long. Thank you so much, and, and you can saw it continuing to screen, correct? Right. Okay. Yes, so we are screening, okay. and we're uh, traveling the okay, world, great. Right? Yeah, so okay, we're going around. There was okay. another question. Thank you so another hand I'm, I'm so sorry. They are kicking us. We will be outside this. We can continue the conversation. I'm so sorry. Thank you so, so much. much.